up to this thing, get the pressure probes on it. Then, under the house, do a quick check on the static pressure. And make sure this refrigerant charge is set right. wired right, make sure the airflow is set up properly on it. <coughs> so, it's kind of a busy Monday back at work. We've got oh, four installs today. Maybe five, I don't know. I know I'm doing two of the startups. So, this is the first of two. Let's see where we're at right now. It's a lower system, so the charge should be pretty close. We can get the damn app to work. So we're running a 121 over 340 with a 13 roughly superheat and a 10 degree subcool. And we're right, right on the money with the subcooling. Requires 10, subcooling is 10. And I got here, since we've been on the install crew, we had this job pretty much installed and done by two o'clock. They're already gone, and I'm just coming behind to make sure all the wiring is right. Train system, heat pump. Uh, there's a Honeywell T6 thermostat in there, so not the train. We install these outdoor switches for breaking the heat strips. We set that on right at about 40 degrees to break the heat strips in heat mode. Then I'm coming out on white, going back in on black to the air handler, to the heat strips, from the thermostat through this, back to the heat strips. The temperature drops below 40, this will close, make that circuit, and then the thermostat or the, the auxiliary heating will come on. We just had an issue when trying to tie in an outdoor sensor with some of those train thermostats, not reading accurate temperature, things like that, so we've, we've been using on, the, on these models. We just use the outdoor temperature switch and it works just fine. A little bit more reliable to me. Don't have a sensor that's going to go bad. Thermostat wire issue, a thermostat. Um, these things work real good when you want to lock out your heat strips on a budget. So, anyway, everything out here is wired right. So, we're going to get under the house real quick. We're going to check the static pressure and uh, see what our temperature split is on this thing so yeah this definitely was a install on a budget well, the equipment price is going up a lot of the homeowners are choosing not a lot but more than average or normal using the lesser less expensive options which I mean you can't blame them and let me go get my unit bit real quick so I can pop a hole for static all right double check the wiring in here from my thermostat wiring and I already know that works because that's how I shut the system down a couple minutes ago took that out flipped it upside down made sure it broke broke the circuit to the thermostat we do put even in crawl spaces a water safety switch because we don't want the water to fill up the brand new air handler if there's an issue with the drain line which it's all brand new shouldn't clog but put a shut off on it don't let somebody's equipment especially if it's brand new equipment 
fill up and flood with water. That's just lazy. So anyway. Alrighty. So we got our R, which is breaking through that float switch. Reversal valve, our Y, our G, all our commons. And then this is our wire coming back, coming from the thermostat right here. So we're sending Y or W right here from the thermostat for the auxiliary. Goes to the white, going to the outdoor unit, to that switch we put out there for the temperature switch to break the circuit for the heat strips so they don't come on until it's below a certain temperature outside. Then... We come back in on our black wire from outside to tie into our auxiliary to energize the heat strips when that switch closes. Like I said, we had an issue with connecting just an April Air or Honeywell outdoor temperature sensor with some of those T-model thermostats. The T6220 uh, is the one that allows you to go in and set up an outdoor sensor. And it was reading, the calibration was poor on it, so... We decided to just start using on these lower models the uh, outdoor temperature switch so all our wiring is good so right now i'm just waiting for the thermostat to come back on in a call for cooling and then i'm going to check our airflow check the static Make sure the static is good. And if I need to adjust the airflow, I'll make that adjustment. So, sorry about that. So I'm going to make a hole over here. And then I'm going to make another one over here when it comes back on. We're going to quantify our airflow and make sure that's good. And that'll, there we go. She's coming back on and we'll get our temperature split. And I think, as I've said before, which way you point that really doesn't matter. I just make it a habit to have the arrow pointing one way <laughs> or back the other. And just whichever one it is, uh, I get the same static either way. So let's check our zero my manometer. static so we have a point oh six and point oh six so it doesn't matter which way so here and we will check our return Filter should be good as we replace the filters when we do the install. So we've got a 0.22 on our return. So we shouldn't have any static issues. Outdoor unit is back on. So now that I know our static is good, I'm pretty positive our refrigerant charge with a 13 superheat and a 10 subcooling is good. And we're going to get our temperature split 
And then while I'm waiting on that, I'm going to come over here. And I'm going to get the book and go to our airflow performance chart there and we are going to check our airflow and this model number is a TEM AOB 31M and the chart for that one is right here and we're running basically about a 0.3 total static and For a two and a half ton unit, I'm looking for a thousand CFM. So, at a 0.3 static, we're running right in that 983 range on, high, or yeah, 983 CFM on our high speed tap, which is where it was, which is perfectly fine. It doesn't have to be a thousand CFM. Remember, we're in the south where it's nice and humid and damp and wet in the summer. 400 CFM on the variable speed communicating systems. Yes, because it needs 400 CFM the way it's set up to calculate the modulation with the blower and the outdoor unit speed. In one of these, you're looking probably in this area around 300 and 70 cfm per ton on average um, because you want to do a little bit slower air to get a little bit better moisture removal and moisture management out of the system so this thing being a two and a half ton unit and we're running at 900 and roughly 80 cfms so with that said this one running about 980 cfm as a two and a half ton system is right where you want to be we want to do better moisture management in this house uh, the variable speed train systems, 400 CFM per ton. Uh, if you're setting up a communicating or a variable speed air handler, you're going to put your tonnage of your outdoor unit in there and let it calculate the CFM per ton. You can set it at 400. If it's communicating, it needs to be 400, the variable speed, because it modulates that blower properly with the uh, compressor speed. But on any other matchup, I typically will set my CFMs around 370 in this region. Uh, because you want to have a little bit better moisture management and humidity control with the interior of the house. So you're going to slow that. If you're out in Arizona, out west somewhere, yeah, you're going to run 400 CFM per ton because you're cooling. You're not as dry out there. Here, it's humid, it's damp, it's hot. And when you add that humidity, it just makes that temperature that much less comfortable. So you want to do a better job with moisture management inside the house. So we're not going to run 400 CFM per ton. We're going to run about 370 CFM per ton. Slow that airspeed through that coil just a little bit. Do a little bit more moisture removal. It's kind of how we do that. So with that said, we are going to be in business with this one. So everything's wired up right. Plug up my holes real quick that I just put on the plenum. So I had a 50 degree supply. The indoor temperature is 72, so that's gonna give me roughly about a 21 degree split or so. I know it's probably a degree, a little bit, just a tad cooler on that return side. But our static's good, our temperature split is good. She's draining water. Our superheat and subcooling are dialed in. Our refrigerant charge is good. The low voltage is wired up correctly for the heat strips and for all the other operations. The thermostat is set up and uh, this system is done. And uh, I'm gonna go do another startup. Thanks for watching, guys.